Mr. John Tuck, good to see you, my man. It's been a long time since we've seen you in action. For those that don't know, I've seen you along the way, but where have you been for the last year? Well, I was, I've been in Guam. Well, actually, I've been, I've been recovering from shoulder surgery and got cleared uh, around November, December to, to full, full throttle training. And, um, yeah, I started training hard since January. I was trying to get on the Australia card in March. Didn't go through, so I was already in, in you know, phenomenal shape and wanted to turn it up more because they placed me on the Rotterdam card, which is this Sunday. And so I headed out to train um, in Orange County with uh, Kings MMA and Church Boys and my conditioning coach, Nick Kirsten, over at uh, Speed of Sport. We thought about you a long time training at the lab. So now that you're out there in Southern California, first of all, what brought you to that area? And, and, and what are you thinking about the scene right now? It sounds like there's a lot of good stuff going on in SoCal right now. Yeah, well, you know, I really wanted to take my conditioning to another level. Uh, I just wanted, you know, he, Nick Kirsten and Speed of Sport, he, he's really got a, a different um, a different way to, to train his athletes, you know, and and it's you know he doesn't deal with so much weight but more focus on speed and and explosive strength and you know that's the kind of that's kind of what i need in my arsenal is just to make sure that i'm faster than everybody and and just as strong and powerful because you know with speed you can you can come with uh knockouts easier you know so i uh, really worked with him and then also uh kings and church boys you know they got they got all the top guys Verdum, Dos Anjos, Machida, and Jake Ellenberger, and Kelvin Gastelum, and great kickboxers, you know, Giga Chikadze, and uh, Artur, and there's many, many, many guys that that are not even known that, that will be one day. That's awesome. Now you're fighting here, uh, international event for you again. I think it's your fourth international event out of your six UFC fights. I know you wanted to fight in Asia, but, I, I mean, are you, have you told them, like, don't put me on these United States cards. Let's let me go see the world. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't mind fighting on big, bigger, uh, bigger cards in in U.S. You know, or I, I like to, I like to go to the the unknown territory. You know, if I could, but uh, I love I love being in Asia because you know I bring a whole a whole wolf pack with me from Guam. You know, I was trying to I was trying to fight in that Australia card, and maybe five hundred to a thousand would would have flown out to watch that fight. So imagine if they go back to the Philippines or Japan or, or wherever it be in Asia, for sure I'm going to have at least a 1,000 people. You know, the governor of Guam, the lieutenant governor of Guam, they'll fly out too. So so it's really, uh, I got I got that whole support system. When I fight far away uh, as as I am here, you know, uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of supporters that will fly out, but, you know, I'm packing an army when, when, when I'm closer to Asia Pacific region. Nice. Well, I heard the Philippines in November, so I guess we can pencil you in for that card right now. We'll just get that done. Yeah, man. S sign me up. You know, reserve a spot for me, you know. I mean, sh if you want, you know, hopefully I get a couple more wins to, to maybe co-main event that thing or even main event if somebody falls out. Nice. I'm willing for the task, you know. Five rounds, no problem. Nice. Well, let's talk about this fight first up that you have. I'm assuming you got on a plane thinking you were fighting Nick Hine. Uh, when did you find out that that wasn't going down, and how did it play out for, for you to get this replacement fight? Well, yeah, it sucks, man, because, you know, you, you, train, you train a whole camp for some guy that you put your mind into, but, you know, I'm sparring with everybody, high-level guys, you know, whether it be stand-up or, or wrestling or whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm training with the best, and um, the guy, you know, I woke up, what was it, like three days ago or something, I woke up and... I seen, I seen, uh, I seen the fact that Nick Hine was injured. I was like, "Damn, really?" You know, I was like, I trained the whole time for that, but I just had to switch, uh, switch my my mind to focus it on now and Josh Emmett. You know, um, the only thing is fighting a southpaw to an orthodox guy. But uh, yeah, it, it's you know, I let it go. You know, people do get injured and. And uh, wish Nick Hine the best, you know, recover well, and, you know, one day we can meet up again. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. It's a beautiful country. And to put it all on the line for, for everybody that supports me on my island, you know. So how does that process go, though? I mean, does Joe Silva call you and say, hey, we're thinking about this guy, or do you basically just find out I'm fighting somebody new and you don't really have much say in the matter? Well, my manager um, actually hit me up. He said, hey, what? what's going on he your opponent pulled out 
Joe Silva hit him up and and they just told me who the opponent was and I was like hey man I'll, I'll scrap anybody it doesn't matter you know things happen and you gotta adjust you know what if Nick Hine wasn't uh, Southpaw and I had to fight him orthodox you know that that could have been different it's like when I fought the Chinese guy uh, Chia Tran Zhang uh, I trained for a uh, regular stance guy but he came out Southpaw but you know it doesn't matter a scrap's gonna be a scrap and I train hard and I train with with so many different kind of kind of styles that it's not even gonna play a big big difference you know nice well I think a lot of people it's been so long might forget you had a great performance last time out picked up a bonus it's been a year how big is this fight now to kind of get that momentum going because you've never won two UFC fights in a row you know to, to get that win streak going and also to kind of pick back up where you left off a year ago yeah I mean you know winning coming off of that coming off that fight and and planting the seed that that I am uh, an exciting fighter you know I mean I I perform well in the other fights but not where I should have performed you know but in that last fight that's where I felt like I, I, I showed somewhat more of a taste of what I what I have to offer and and I'm, yeah I'm looking forward to riding a five fight winning streak you know and just keep climbing the ranks and and get up to contendership because that's you know that's really what where I should be and I mean I train with the best and and you know it's it's if not the same or just you know you know it's, just right there you know so it's like i'm just ready to take this all 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 the way to the top and and get in there and finally and finally you know truly represent nice you mentioned guam quite a bit what's the scene like there man i mean obviously you're representing the island but what what's it like there i've never been yeah well guam is kind of more like um a smaller version of hawaii if you could say it'd be the hawaii for asia uh it's real like it's not as crowded as Hawaii. It's it's way beautiful, and uh, I, you know I come from an exotic place. It's a beautiful island, man. Everybody's so loving and giving, and you know people are really proud and respectful of uh, of our heritage. And yeah, the scene over there is is awesome. I mean, it's like training in paradise, you know. And everybody everybody grows up training, you know. Jiu-jitsu is real big. MMA is big. You know, it's like if not soccer or, or real one of the regular sports, MMA or jiu-jitsu is like the biggest sport on the island per capita in the world. We are, we train, most people in the world train in jiu-jitsu and MMA on Guam. It's a lot of up-and-comers, you know, got a lot of guys coming from from uh, the gym we train at and and uh, they, they should be in the, in, in the UFC, if not, you know, sooner, but they'll eventually get there. Very nice. You represent Guam with the with the necklace you wear, weigh-ins, right? Can you tell people about that? What, what it represents and what it means to you? Well, the the sanahi is what I wear. It's uh, it's made from a a giant clamshell, and uh, since way back um, before Christ, you know, those days, my people would dive in the ocean and and pick up these giant clamshells and pick it back up and take it onto the beach and then you know the process of of carving it down into that crescent shape that that it is and it's more for like a a ceremonial or very important events but also the chiefs wear it and mine's actually a real big one so you know uh, I'm proud of proud to to represent you know that that uh, every time I go into the ring or into the, the octagon it's it's uh you know that's 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 for for the pride of my people. Very cool. If I remember right, I think it might have been uh, when we were in Macau. I think it broke one time, right? So do you take extra care with it now when you're packing it up and putting it in the luggage? <laughs> no, that was actually in New Mexico, man. <laughs> uh, Big John, um, he he uh, was handling it and he put it in the uh, in the gi and and he placed it down. But that thing is like it's it's fragile. You know, you got to take care of it, even though it weighs like like two pounds or three pounds you know you put it down and the thing just snapped in half but i ended up getting a a new one and uh i saved the other one you know put put it together and everything but um but yeah no you got to really take care of that thing because it's you gotta gotta respect it (laughs) (laughs) very nice all right let's talk about sunday night what are we going to see you mentioned you know the focus is is on speed and you know a new type of training it's been a while since we've seen you in action so what kind of fight are we going to see on sunday well you know man I didn't like I've said. I'm only, I'm only. It's, I'm not even. 
I'm not even near where I should be, and I have so much potential. And and all these, all the coaching I've got from from Nick Curson and Rafa, uh, Master Rafael Cordero and and Jacob Harmon, you know, it's like uh, I still have so much potential, so much time to grow and room to grow. And but I think this is the best I've ever been. As at the same time, I'm more 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 faster, stronger, and and um, I'm just I'm just excited, man. It's gonna be a whole different beast, you know. Super Saiyan level two, Super Saiyan level three, whatever, man. I'm 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 just pumped to to get in there and and actually showcase this time, you know. I mean, coming off that that last win, you know, it's uh, it's exciting to to finally really take flight and take take a take what's truly mine. And and I sacrificed so much, you know. I left family to be where I'm at, and and uh, you know. The sacrifice there is, is going to help me get the victory.